Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to Axel's Garage. We're in Axel's kitchen. The baby mama's at the sink getting it all cleared out for me, and I am preparing tomorrow night's meal. It's, it's Friday night at like 8 o'clock. Was it 8 o'clock? Yep. Holy shit, it's 8, 8.30 already. And uh, we're making uh, something in the smoker that's going to go in at the crack of dawn. So I'm getting it ready tonight. So how the story goes is we went to the restaurant supply to get a brisket. Because my wife is a fan of brisket. And I am a shitty brisket cooker. So we need to keep doing it in order to become proficient at it. And the brisket was like six seventy nine a pound. And then it was, when was it? It was like right before St. Patrick's Day, right? Yeah. So this was last year. This was during the, the virus, the beginning of the virus. So um, we look and they had pallets of corned beef, which is a, is a full packer brisket, as you can see right here. But it's, it's corn or brine. So it's in a, a seasoned salt brine and it's pre brine but it's the same full pack of brisket that you would get when you get brisket except it's brine. So what do you do with the corned beef when you're not cooking it corned beef and carrots for, for, for uh, St. Patrick's Day? Turn it into a pastrami. Because to do a pastrami you gotta take a brisket, right? Which is six seventy nine a pound right now, especially up here in New York. Mm -hmm. And then just like two months ago, a month ago. Right, this one. Yeah. This is how we first started doing oh, it. Oh, I think you're telling them that. No, 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 no. This is how we first started doing it. So then we, um, so six seventy nine a pound for a brisket. Then you got to brine it for like 28 days to turn it into a corned beef. And then from a corned beef, you season it and smoke it, and it becomes a pastrami. But if you buy the corned beef instead of the brisket, got a 17 and a half pound full packer here. It was $3.05 a pound for this full packer. Okay, spices added, keep refrigerated. We actually froze this one. We bought this one, what, two months ago or so? Froze it. So we took it out early this morning, let it thaw. It's still probably frozen on the inside. But what I'm going to do is, you can see in the package, it's very uh, bloody. Um, and it's still got that brine solution in the vacuum seal package. So what I do with it is I'm going to take it, I'm going to bring it over to the sink, I'm going to cut it out of the bag and drain it all out and then we're going to just wash it with cold water and that's just to get the excess salt off because the the salt brine that they put this in is very salty and you want to get some of that saltiness out of it because otherwise your end product is going to be too salty um, but making the corned beef into a pastrami a great economical way to have brisket will have pastrami because it's half the price less than half the price of natural brisket um, I don't know why uh, you do trim it down. So this is 17 and a half. We're probably going to trim a good, a good uh, two to three pounds of fat off of it, and, uh, and I'll take you along the way on that. But let me get this washed, um, get, get, get it all rinsed off and washed off. We'll get it on the cutting board, and I'll show you exactly how I prep it to get it into the smoker tomorrow morning. Okay, I got my corned beef washed down, cold water, and I have a uh, bony knife a sharp, sharp bony knife. The sharper the knife, the easier it is. And we're gonna have to trim this down. I also, usually, if I can, now this is, like I said, I froze this. So it's partially thawed, which should make it a little bit easier to trim up, um, but I don't know if it's gonna make it harder to separate the point from the flat, which is usually what I do, because I'm, I'm gonna use a small upright smoker for this, so I like to split the point and the fat, uh, and the flat, rather. <laughs> Um, but we're gonna do a lot of trimming on it. So I have it on a uh, on a dish towel Just so that the extra water wouldn't soak and then I'll flip it over to my cutting board So I'm just gonna move it over To the cutting board and get that dish towel out and now we're gonna do a lot of trimming We're gonna take a decent amount of fat off any hard fat is gonna come off and any um, Meat that looks a little gray on the edges is gonna come off and that's normal on these the brining process will take some of the edge meat and give it like a, a feel or a texture. And you can see right on this side of the flat, let me get it up for you. Um, right along here, it's like a little gray and it's a little rough feeling. And we're just gonna trim any of that off. And that's that's normal on a, on a uh, corned beef from sitting in the brine. So like right here on this part, we got some real hard fat 
and I'm just going to take the boning knife and just work nice and easy and get most of the hard fat off trying to take as little meat off as possible I want to leave as much meat on it and, and not take too much meat but you have to go in there with the tip of the boning knife and sometimes you got to really poke in good like that and try to get some of that that hard fat out um, you're going to trim it a lot leaner than you would uh, doing a regular brisket so don't be afraid to take a lot of fat off you're not going to kill the flavor you're not going to dry it out believe me if you have trouble making brisket like I do you tend to sometimes overcook it and dry it out this it's it's it, 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 it's really easy um, I'm surprised more people don't actually do it it's that easy but watch your fingers try not to cut yourself with the sharp knife and if you pull the fat away as you're trimming you won't get as much uh, meat so you won't have as much meat waste but you're gonna have see this is all that hard fat right here um, I'm going to wind up with a giant pile of fat. You'll see how big this, this pile here that I have on this uh, cutting board is going to grow. So I'm going to work at this and I usually keep spinning it around. It makes it a little bit easier until I got one side pretty much done. And how I wind up separating the point from the fat is as you're, uh, the point from the flat, is as you're cutting that hard roll of, of fat that sort of separates the point from the flat and the more you dig at that fat the more you see where the separation is in the meat and that the, the the grain of the meat and you'll know where to cut to separate your point from your flat it's not something that's that's easy to show I'm gonna do my best but the more you do it the better you get at it um, and I'm just gonna try to trim some fat and when I get a little bit closer to where I'm going to do the separation, I'll pull the camera in and really show you what um, what we're doing to try to trim it and separate the two pieces. So like some of this fat here, you just go nice and easy right over it. Be careful that with this hand, your hold hand, that you're not slipping and once you get some you can pull and you can drag that blade and the fat tends to separate nice and easy to there I got a little bit of meat I went a little too deep try to do your best you don't have to this soft fat that's on the top of this you don't have to go crazy with I'm sort of happy with this section here this top section I'm gonna spin it around so that you can see this section this section is where I told you about how the meat on the edge tends to get a little a little strange so I just cut it so that I have nice red corned beef behind it and I discard that so I'm just going to come in over here and again I'm going to get that off and when I flip it over I'll be able to, to see in there and get a little bit more but you can see right in here where the point and the flat come together I just come in with the knife and I'm cutting and I'm still just hitting this is all fat right here now you start pulling like this and following that thick fat line and you can see how my point and my flat are starting to separate as I trim and at this point I'm not even into meat in here I'm still all in all fat right now when you flip it over you can see you got a lot over on 
the side that has the fat cap. So this much fat on this side of the point is pretty pretty acceptable. Just a nice thin layer. The hard stuff is off. I trimmed off. You saw that real thin section. In here is probably gonna probably gonna be a little more of a charry piece on this the little flat portion. That's where if you were doing a regular brisket, you'd get your burn ends. If there's any real thin section of meat, like on the end, that you know might burn, if you were doing regular brisket with pastrami, a lot of times you can leave it, because it might not burn the same way. And even the more well done pieces of pastrami, are actually pretty flavorful and pretty juicy so you don't have to waste all of that thin stuff so I'm pretty satisfied with that I got a thin layer of fat nothing crazy and you want to just make sure the hard fat is out a little chunk of hard fat in here you have to get it all, but don't have an inch thick layer of hard fat on it, because that's just not gonna rent it down. But this is this is pretty good the way it is. So there's my my point. Now on the flat. checking my sides for anything that's either real thin or a gray spot that I missed everything looks good here so we got a little bit of fat here on the fat cap side we got a thin coating of soft fat that'll rend it down I'm happy with that one as these well these are still like I said partially frozen it is Friday night it's 9 o'clock now so 9, 9 11 it is so, so 10 after 9 figure so what did that take me? 20 minutes, a half hour to uh, to trim it down and separate it. The better, you, the more you do it, the better you get at it. This started out at a 17 and a half pound. It's probably down to about 12 to 14 pounds now. And I got the point and the the flat. When I put them in the smoker, the point is going to go on the bottom and the flat is going to go on the top. And the reason being is that's going to get the brunt of the heat and it's a lot fattier piece, so it can handle it and then they we're going to wind up getting wrapped anyway sometime into the smoke but what we're going to do now friday night is i'm going to season it seasoning on this is very easy black pepper coriander that's it i don't do a 25 75 ratio 50 50 ratio i cover it with coriander cover it with black pepper both sides i'll put uh, some saran wrap or foil or something over these and put them in the fridge overnight or until I don't know we're gonna put this on about about seven o'clock in the morning and uh, we'll season them up now and I'll show you exactly how much I season them. Okay starting off with coriander I'm just gonna sprinkle and put a nice coating All right. 
nice coating of coriander. Next one is going to be black pepper. We have used a real coarse butcher grind black pepper, and now we're using more of a, a fine. I found that the fine worked a little bit better than that real coarse butcher blend. And you're going to give it a healthy coating of black pepper. And that is it. I you really don't have to pat it in. You don't have to rub it. It's gonna it's gonna stick to the meat for the most part, just because of the moisture content of the meat. Now I'm just gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side to both pieces. So that's it for the seasoning. Absolutely do not add anything salty. No, no salt, so no salt, no salt, no salt, no salt. Really just needs the coriander and the black pepper. You don't need really any other seasoning. Traditional pastrami doesn't have any other seasoning. So these corned beefs are gonna become pastrami. Now it's 921. These are partially frozen, so for us, we're throwing this on at six or seven in the morning. Haven't figured out exactly what time yet. Um, I gotta do the math as far as the cook time is probably gonna be around 10 hours, some, somewhere in there. 10 hours to cook, an hour to rest, and then, uh, and then slice and serve. So depending on, uh, we're having some people over tomorrow, right? Yeah. Um, depending on, on, on that timing, we'll have to figure that out. It'll depend on what time we're gonna throw it in in the morning. You really want these to go in the smoker at room temperature. Um, you don't want them cold in the smoker because then you're just going to drop the um, amount of heat because I put an ice cube in the, in the heating box. So what I'm going to do is, because these are partially frozen, I'm just going to cover them and we're going to leave them out because they're only going to be out for a few hours and they'll thaw the rest of the way and hopefully they'll be around room temperature when they go in the smoker. Uh, you could do this a day or two in advance, season it, saran wrap it or foil it, put it in the fridge and let it soak with the, with the seasoning on it for a day or two is fine, but you're gonna, you're gonna want to, if it's refrigerated, you're gonna want to take it out probably about six hours before you're gonna put it in the smoker and let it sit at room temperature. You can let it sit covered at room temperature so that you're not putting the cold meat in your smoker, which affects your temperature fluctuations of your smoker. I'm gonna use an electric smoker. Um, a manually thermostated electric smoker. I'm going to try to get it to about 225 degrees for the first four to six hours of the cooking, probably about four hours. I want to get it to that. I want to get a little bit of a bulk on it. So I'm going to go 225 for about four hours. I'm going to watch the temps, maybe get it to about one, between 160 and 170 before I pull it out, wrap it, and throw it back in for the remainder of the cook. And we'll continue on tomorrow when we get these in the smoker. All right, so the following morning, and you can tell from my voice, I'm not a morning person. But we're out here at the smoker. This is a, a real cheap master belt smoker. Um, this one's lasted me a few years. I, I've had different ones over the years, expensive ones and cheap ones. Um, not really a video about smokers. Whatever works for you, works for you. I had a, a decent electronic electric smoker with a digital control panel, and I'm, I'm doing two pork butts for my daughter's school, and the thing just took a dump on me. And I had to buy a smoker in a pinch. I ran over to my local Ace Hardware and they had this for like $99. Um, and it saved my my books for that day. And I've been using it for quite a few years since then. It hasn't, I keep them outside. They usually only last a few years, no matter how good one or inexpensive one I buy. They usually last, you know, after a couple years they go bad. This one's been kicking pretty good for a while. So, um,. I got it all set up, I got my wood hopper filled, I got my drip pan or water pan filled with water. Um, I want to keep my moisture content up as high as possible. As you can see, I do not clean my smoker, they usually break before I would ever clean them. And if I cleaned it, I'm sure it would break. Um, but I'm going to load it up in, so I'm going to put that flat up on top and I'm going to put the point on the middle shelf and I'm going to put my temperature probe in the point because that's going to get hot the fastest. So once that point hits about 165 degrees, I know that I can come in and start to to wrap at least that point to protect it. Um, 
the flat can take a, a, a tolerate a little bit more uh, time because of where it is in the smoker, but the point is going to get the brunt of it. And the reason why I'm letting the point get the brunt of it is because it's the fattiest, so it can handle the most. always comes up, um, the fat cap up or the fat cap down. On the pastrami, I found that it really doesn't matter. I do what looks like it's going to protect the meat as, as much. So what I did was on, on this point where it had the, that loose flap, I put the flap up to protect it. On this one, where it's uh, on the second level and it's being protected a little bit by the point, on this flat, it really doesn't matter. You can put it up or down. You might always have it when doing a pork shoulder or a brisket was always a uh, fat side on top so that it can rent it down and, and self-marinate. That was just my preference, does it really matter? Um, I've done it both ways and I haven't had better results one way or the other. I really don't think it matters, just like the wood. The wood, when you're doing a pastrami, it don't matter. That brine is what is where the flavor is coming from. The wood, I use whatever I have on hand and I've never had a, a real change in flavor on it either. So. All I gotta do is put my temperature probe in. I'm gonna put that in the point on the bottom and we can get going. So my probe, I am just gonna go into the thickest part of the point and and I'm just going to pull my wire up and make sure I'm out of the way of anything. And with these electric smokers, they get up to temp real fast. So we're going to pull this up to about 225, and then we're going to try to adjust it to lock it in there. All right, we're about six hours in, and the temperature has been between 175 not over 180 so it's been like 175 76 77 in that range there for the better part of an hour which is the stall point so what I didn't show on camera was in about three hours I flipped the point because the points on the bottom close to the heat so I gave it a flip this way it'll cook a little more evenly and tend not to to burn and now that we're six hours through and we kind of, kind of hit that stall 180 degree temperature once it breaks through the stall it's going to go fast so what i want to do now is cover it uh, historically i've been covering in foil but today i'm going to try butcher paper and see if there is any difference in the in the final result i don't anticipate there being any and butcher paper is probably a little bit easier to, to use than foil Pull my temperature probe out, let that cool off. I'll take my two pieces out, and here's what they look like. That's it. Good wrap with these two like this. What I'm going to do now is put them back on the smoker and I'm going to put that temperature probe through and we are going to cook it the rest of the way till about 205 degrees or so and that's when we'll pull it off. So I started them at 8 in the morning. The, the point came off at about um, 
five o'clock, it hit, it hit 204 degrees, and the flat hit 202 degrees at six o'clock. So I pulled them off and I let them rest for about 45 minutes. And now I'm gonna try slicing them. I haven't done this in the past. Usually I just slice it with a knife and you make thick slices. This time I'm gonna try it on the slicer. So here is our Here is our point. And you can see it shrunk down quite a bit from where it was at. And we are going to try that little wound there is when I took a peek at it and had to take a little, little chunk out. So I'm going to take this point and put it in just kind of this way and we'll see how it does on a slicer. ultimate way to do this would be to refrigerate it overnight then put it on the slicer it would be real easy to slice wow it's real hot inside I love the way it came out it's juicy it is it is nice it's flavorful it's definitely pastrami and it's definitely hot. I'm going to have to let the flat cool down a little bit more before I slice it. That's a bigger piece. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, this was out 45 minutes longer than that and this was real hot. So I'm going to let that cool a little bit more. But listen, there's probably a dozen different ways to do pastrami. This is the way I do it. Like I said, I usually wrap it in foil. I tried the butcher paper just because we happen to have a lot of it there. Um, when we rebuilt this slicer in a different video, we got a playlist for how we rebuilt this old 1940 slicer. And I wanted to try using the butcher paper. I also wanted to try using the slicer to slice it up. As you can see, when you get down towards the end, I'm going to have to do that with a knife and have some chunks on the serving platter that we're going to have with this pastrami tonight. That's it today from Max's Garage. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you do or may do differently. Um, like I said, there's really no wrong way to do it. It turns into a pastrami. It's flavorful, it's moist, it's juicy, not dried out at all. I really like it, I think it's easy. I haven't been able to screw one up yet, and it's less than half the price of doing a, uh, a regular brisket. Thanks for watching.